was the Maurya ruler himself a source of law? Normally, in ancient Indian tradition, the ruler is considered to be dharma pravartaka. If there is a conflict among different sources of law, royal documents get the precedence over other sources of law. And Ashoka's edicts can be considered as examples of what Kautilya would call Raja Shashanas. Now, the ruler, though he is very important, in fact, the very pivotal feature of the entire administration, cannot run the state affairs single handed. Here we can remember the celebrated maxim of Kautilya, who says, It is impossible for the ruler to rule single handed, it is only with assistance that rulership is possible like a single wheel cannot move the wagon. A person who passed all the four tests will be appointed at an even higher rank mantri or minister. Whether the Mauryas actually appointed ministers is not very clearly ascertainable. In Ashoka's inscriptions, the term mantri never figures. Neither the term amatya at all figures in Ashoka's inscriptions. These are all prescriptions of Kautilya. But that there were very high ranking officers is also indicated by Megasthenes' account who speaks of counsellors and assessors and he tells this is a small group of people but the highest officers of the realm are appointed from among this group. The rank of the officer in the Arthashastra is based on a carefully graded hierarchy. The Arthashastra recommends that the burden of administration should rest on a very large number of departmental heads called adhyakshas. No such adhyakshas ever appear in Ashoka's inscriptions. The highest rank officers in Ashoka's inscriptions are the Mahamatras. The Mahamatras are not seen anywhere else than Ashoka's inscriptions. <laughs>